you guys, Shanti Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shout Mail today. They're going to go out today, see what things came out, see if things are on sale. I know today there's not a whole ton of new releases. I know the main things that are releasing are the commuters coming out, uh, the post, and then like Deep Blue Sea. And other than that though, I don't think there's too many other things, but still going to go out, see what things are, you know, if there's anything else as well. Also, the end of this video is going to be a whole bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received review and talk about for you guys. Some really cool stuff like the new Killer Clowns from Arrow Video and a whole bunch of other stuff so stay tuned for those at the end of this video but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into target we go and like I mentioned, pretty much the only major releases today was, you know, the Tom Hanks film, you know, and Meryl Streep film, uh, The Post, which is directed by Steven Spielberg. I have not seen this one, though. Let me know if you guys have seen this, you know, how this one is. I believe there's a 4K of that one as well. And then the film starring Liam Neeson, The Commuter, which I'm going to be talking about this one, the 4K one of this, at the end of this video. So definitely stay tuned for that at the end. But I actually like that movie. Pretty much like all the action Liam Neeson films. But this is one of the better ones, I thought for sure. But it doesn't seem like there's any exclusives of that one today. Um, but I don't see the 4K. And it doesn't look like they have the uh, Deep Blue Sea in here anywhere. Because I've looked on both sides in here for the Deep Blue Sea uh, 2. But other than that, though, that seems to be all of the major ones in here today. Into Walmart we go. Well, like I said, though, you know, um, the commuter came out today and they have the f uh, 4K of that one for $24.96. And there was one for the post on 4K. That one's $24.96 as well. But they actually do have in here the uh, Deep Blue Sea 2. They have the Blu-ray and the DVD. The Blu-ray $17.96. The DVDs are uh, $12.96. If you guys have watched this one, let me know how this one was. From what I heard, it's kind of like a remake, sort of, of the, of the same story. For the, similar, that's what I sort of read. But if you guys have seen it, though, let me know, though, how that one was. And this one, I think, was today. This thing called, like, Sheep, yeah, sheep and Wolves. Some kind of, like, Sheep Fighting Wolves or something like that. That was today. But other than that, though, that's pretty much all of the major ones in here. And this past weekend, I saw two different films. Uh, the first one I saw was Truth or Dare. And I know that one, you know, the reviews or anything haven't been great. But it's one of those ones that was kind of like exactly, you know, what I expected it was going to be. It wasn't amazing or anything. But it was like fun, cheesy, ridiculous, like ridiculous deaths. And it was basically, though, about a group of these friends who all go out to Mexico on spring break. They're all getting ready to graduate from college. So it's their, like, last big trip together they go out there and meet this guy at this bar and he invites them all to go out to this old church to play truth or dare and they you know go out there and and when they're out there though you know of course they start playing the game and they come to find out you know right when they get back home from Mexico this truth or dare game is continuing on and it's like they're seeing weird visions of people saying truth or dare or like people get like in their mind possessed and have these weird smiles and say it truth or dare and if you don't play the game person doesn't play it they end up dying and it's kind of like all these people you know trying to figure out what's going on and kind of how to stop what's happening I liked it like I said it's not a maze or anything I did get sent these um like promo items for the movie I just want to show you guys it's like little dice thing here that spins around you, you know you, when you, th you throw it it has on here truth or dare so you could play truth or dare with this and they sent these little you know these edible crickets bacon and cheese flavored crickets and no I'm not going to try these as well as um these like I think they're like chocolate and, and white chocolate covered bugs and worms in here and they also sent this like muscle shirt but you know someone like me you know when you lose a lot of weight you're never ever gonna wear a muscle shirt that says truth or dare I can't even really get it out but it's like a medium but it would not be a good thing for me to wear and they also sent these little cards in here and on the cards you actually could play truth or dare with these because they actually have like dares on them like you know uh, text the uh, fourth contact in your phone what you really think of them so it's got all these different things on here like let a stranger send a text from your phone so these are kind of cool like if you're actually playing truth or dare they actually have things on them that you you know could do the other one I saw uh, this weekend was the film Rampage, you know, which was based on the video game. I never, I don't think I really ever played the game, but, you know, this one stars, uh, you know, The Rock, and it's basically about these, these, like, weird things that crash down from space, these, like, test subjects they were doing up in space on these animals and stuff, and they crash down in three different areas, one by a wolf in the woods, one by, like, an alligator in a swamp, and then one in, a, you know, a gorilla enclosure, you know, which is where, you know, this safari kind of park place where The Rock works. 
and it kind of transforms the animals and they start growing and having weird things happen to them and of course though the animals are kind of attacking people and then you know the animal that the rock takes care of he has all this stuff happening to him so it's kind of like the government comes in there to take the, the you know, him away and it's kind of like you know the rock sort of trying to save the world from oh, what's happening it's like ridiculous like i will say um some of the CGI in it, like, you know, like some of the explosions and stuff in it did not look amazing, you know, uh, but, you know, there was some that was really, really good looking, but some of it was, was, was not amazing, but it was, it wasn't amazing film or anything, but it was a fun kind of like crazy animal attack kind of film. But if you guys saw either of the movies, though, let me know below what you thought of them or what films you guys saw uh, this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go. Yeah, and like I mentioned though, really the only thing today, you know, was the post and that one is on 1999 here. I don't see the 4K of that one. It might be over on that section. And then the commuter. And I'm also talking about this at the end of this video, uh, Tokyo Ghoul. I really like this one a lot. This is actually pretty good. I don't know too much about the actual anime that it was based on. This might have been today. This one here called Genius. But man, they're blasting the music in here today. Yeah, it was like a, like a techno rave club in here. I've never, I mean, they, they, they lately in the last like three months have always been playing music, but today it was like cranked up as loud as, loud as they could get it. And it was like the strangest techno y, like not great music. It was really strange, some of it. But, but no, they didn't seem to have the 4K of the commuter or the post ones. And I looked in the section, didn't see it. And I, didn't, I don't think I saw it in the front, so it was weird. It didn't look like they had it or they didn't put it out. But, you know, like I always say, if you guys enjoy, you know, these, uh, you know, DVD Tuesday shopping videos, definitely give this, you know, give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for a whole bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got here from Arrow Video is a movie that's like probably one of my favorite movies. I watched this movie so many times. It's such a fun movie. I love the cover on this. This is the brand new release of Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which has a brand new uh, 4K restoration of the film. Amazing new transfer on this movie. If you guys don't know this movie, it's basically though about these clowns that come down from space and they basically come there to collect humans and they kind of, you know, zap them with this gun and turn them into this kind of like cotton candy type substance that they like, you know, in this cotton candy type, you know, cocoon thing. And they, you know, they have what they do with the humans. You find out through the, through, through the movie. It's basically about this one guy and his girlfriend who spot this like what they think is like a meteorite coming down. They go out and come across that it's a circus tent. And it's kind of like, you know, they discover what's going on with these clowns and what they're doing. And they're trying to tell the cops and looking at them like they're crazy. And it's sort of like this whole big to do and the whole town is getting taken over by these clowns it is just such a fun movie i've always loved this movie i remember seeing this movie when I, was a, when I was a little kid i think i saw it like watched it on vhs or might have seen it on like uh joe bob briggs or one of those kind of things like really early on and watch this movie so many times like i said it has a brand new 2k scan on here it has an interview on here with the Dickies, you know, who did the theme song for the movie, like a really great theme song. It has a thing on here with the Chota brothers, uh, you know, talking about some of their early short films as well as some of their early short films are on here as well. Uh, a number of uh, interviews on here with the directors as well, a making of on here, uh, deleted scenes, bloopers. And I also switched this underneath as well to the original uh, poster art, art for this one. And in here it actually includes, um, you know, has a booklet in here with some things about the movie movie, some pictures and stuff like that. But one thing that's pretty cool is it actually has a poster as well and it has both uh, the new artwork you know, on here, it has actually a different, alter, an alternate cover here, because it's this one of the clown's big clown face here, and then it has the original poster artwork as well, but this is one of those ones, if you guys are a fan of this movie, and if you guys have never seen it too, it's one you've got to watch, it's just such a fun movie, and it's one of those things too that like I feel like really holds up, like I said, I've watched this movie, I can't even tell you how many times throughout the years. Uh, the next one here, and now this has finally been released individually, uh, and I really like that they're releasing the, the Herschel Gordon Lewis film on, the, on their own because originally they were only in the Herschel Gordon Lewis box set but now they're getting individual releases and this is uh, 2000 Maniacs and there was a remake of this one as well and I remember really liking the remake the original one, though, is it's pretty much the same story, you know, that the remake, you know, used. But it's essentially about these uh, this, these group of these people that end up taking a wrong turn because they see this sign and up in this small town. It's kind of like going back into a time warp, and it's like kind of like dealing with the South who rise again and all that. And they get to this town right in time, and when they're having this like colonial kind of uh, thing going on. 
it's pretty much about these people getting themselves trapped there and the people in this small town are really like weird and they're all like you know killing the people that came into the town off and it's all kinds of really weird stuff going on i've always really liked this movie like i said i really liked the remake as well and they made a sequel to the remake as well which wasn't as good but the original you know remake was fun as well this has on here though a high definition transfer on here it has um uh bonus feature film on here moonshine mountain it has introductions on here by her are going Lewis. This one that you guys know though that this one is available. I'm going to let you guys know about this one as well. This set being available from uh, Arrow Video. And this is, I don't know how to say it for sure. It's like the Shijin Suzaki, The Early Years, Volume 2 here. And this is a box set that's a limited to 1,500 copies here, this set. And in here though, it's got a couple of different films. It's got it's a two disc set, and it has uh, DVD copies and Blu-ray copies of uh, the films here. And it's got a bunch of different films. It has Eight Hours of Terror. It has Tokyo Nights, The Man with a Shotgun, and the second one here has The Sleeping Beast and the uh, um, Smashing the O Line. Like I said, it includes the uh, DVD copies as well as Blu-ray copies of the films in here. But and it also has a booklet, a uh, substantial booklet with pictures and stuff like that about the films but like I said just one that you guys know that this one is available so some really cool stuff from Arrow especially the uh, Killer Clowns one like let me know too below what you guys thought of that movie but I've always like I said been a huge fan of that film uh, the next one here is from uh, Lionsgate this is the 4k ultra HD edition of the Liam Neeson film The Commuter and this movie I saw this one in theaters as well I really like this movie this is like it's basically though about Liam Neeson's character who's going home on this train and he had some really bad stuff at his job and you know, he has all these bills that he owes and everything, but he ended up losing his job. But when he's on this train, this weird this woman sits next to him and says you know, hypothetically, what would you do if someone said that if you do something for this person, you know, then if you go into the, the bathroom and you get this thing, and if you do this for this person, you end up getting like, I think it was like $50,000, or it was, I can't remember how much it was, it was a huge amount of money, and he's like, oh, well, well I don't know, I don't, he thought that she was just talking hypothetically, but she's like, well, no, no, this is true. And he ends up actually going to the bathroom and finds that there's this money in there and he has something that he has to do. And she basically is saying you have to find the person who doesn't belong on this train. There's one person who doesn't belong on here. If you can find who that person is, you're going to get another 50 grand. I think that's what it was. I think it was like 100 grand total that he would have gotten, I believe, you know, if he did, you know, what she was asking. But, you know, he ends up actually going to the bathroom and then taking the money. And of course, though, when he does this, he's now accepted this woman's offer and he's on this train and he has to figure out who this person is and he's like, he doesn't really want to do it because he's noticing that it's not seeming like a good idea, but, you know, other people kind of come on the train and say, you don't do this, it's going to be really bad. Some, you know, you're, you're, you know, there's all these, you know, things are bad going to happen to Liam Neeson's family and things if he doesn't do this. So he ends up like sort of trapped on this train trying to figure out exactly, you know, who is this person that doesn't belong and then, th you know, things start going wrong along the way and it becomes like a whole massive to-do and a terrible situation. I really got into this movie. I like this one a lot. I thought Liam Neeson did a really good job and I think this is going to be probably one of the last or the might be one or two more. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty certain this might be the last of these kind of action type films that Liam Neeson's going to do, at least from what I had remembered reading. But this is from the director as well, who did uh, Nonstop in the film The Shallows. So I really like the director's other films as well. This has on here, though, a featurette on the making of the film. And uh, 4K-wise, though, this is a, looks absolutely amazing. It's a great, you know, the whole thing is all set on a, tra a train, so it's got a really slick look to the film. You know, I don't know. I, I'm just a huge fan of Liam Neeson. If you guys have the 4K capacity, though, really, really great colors. Like I always say, the big thing with 4K is the high dynamic range, which is the col color levels, brighter colors, uh, the contrast levels and everything. But definitely one I recommend you guys watch. And one other thing for the commuter I wanted to make sure to show you guys is Lionsgate sent me this really cool promo item here for the commuter, this like messenger bag here to promote the film, as well as this uh, thermos uh, water bottle kind of thing here as well, you know, talking about the movie releasing. This is another one I saw in theaters and really, really love this movie. I thought this was like a really well done, you know, when it comes to like Western movies too, uh, you know, sometimes to me I can either like them or, you know, not really get into them. This one, I really really got into this film and this is the 4k edition of the film hostels and this is um 
So it's Christian Bale. And it's basically, though, set during the... Um, I think it's you know, it says that in, in 1892, and Christian Bale's character is in, like in the war, and he's like this captain, and he's pretty much forced to take this Native American and his family back to you know his reservation where he lived and where he's was you know his family where his family is because he was in prison, but he's like really sick and he's dying, and you know they're kind of gonna let him go so he can get back to see his family because he really doesn't have much time left at all. Christian Bale's character is like I don't want to do this, I I, I don't want to you know he has a lot of problems with Native Americans and he doesn't like this 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 you know chief and he doesn't want to have to go on this journey but he's basically getting said you know you're just about to be able to retire and you're gonna be done but if you don't do this this is not gonna you're not gonna be able to retire you're not gonna be done you know it's not gonna be good you're gonna get arrested if you disobey an order so he pretty pretty, pretty much is forced to go on this you know journey but right in the beginning of the movie, too, you see Rosamund Pike's character getting attacked and by her family getting attacked by these Native Americans. And she's, like, trapped out, you know, where she lives and what happens to her family. It's essentially, though, Christian Bale, when he's going on this journey with the other soldiers taking this Native American's family home, uh, he comes across Rosamund Pike's character and what happened to her family. And it's kind of... You know, she find, finds out, though, this is a terrible situation. These Native Americans are out there, and it's a bad situation for everybody, and they're kind of in this situation dealing with what's happening. But absolutely amazing movie. It's so well done. The story on this movie, I got into this movie so much. It has on here, though, uh, The Journey, The Making of Hostels, which is over 60 minutes long. Uh, 4K-wise, though, this is a really, really gritty, gritty Western. You know, like, all the characters have, like, you know, kind of, like, you know, dirt and stuff rolling, like, rolling around the wind and everything, and it's all, like, you know, the western clothes and everything so really looks great in 4k great color levels and contrast on the on the the wardrobes and everything in this one this movie kind of has a feel too it's not like the film but has a similar vibe to the movie ravenous a little bit that because i always like these kind of journey type films and it has a similar kind of feel but would highly highly recommend you guys check this one out really great film and the next one i got here from lionsgate as well this movie stars jessica roth you know who was you know recently in the film happy death day which i really like that movie. And this is a movie here called Forever My Girl. This is basically about Jessica Roth's character who's, you know, getting married and the day of her wedding, you know, her soon-to-be husband ends up basically flaking out and he's like, he can't do it. And he does, you know, he just leaves her there and says he couldn't do it. And this is set, you know, eight years later and the guy that was going to, you know, be getting married to her, he's now this huge country music star, really popular. He has like all kinds of fans. He's like, you know, getting big attention. Like everywhere, everyone knows who he is. And he finds out though that, you know, his friend had passed away because he's playing a gig nearby. So he ends up going back to his town. And of course, though, he hasn't been back there in like eight years. He hasn't seen his girlfriend that he was going to get married to. So it becomes this whole kind of awkward thing about him going back to see this girl. But he's always sort of like been missing this girl. And he's like, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, decisions for not marrying her. And there's a whole lot of stuff going on. But it's essentially about him kind of coming back into the town and kind of trying to kind of become friends with this girl again and kind of talking to her and sort of trying to see if he can kind of rekindle things with her and she's kind of you know he finds out too right in the beginning that he has this this uh, kid that he knew nothing about and you know his father knew about it but didn't even tell his son tell him about it so it's this kind of an awkward thing about him finding this out and having to try and figure out what he wants to do and if he wants to try and figure out how to make this all work again I honestly got really got into this movie this was a really really well well done character piece. I like this one, honestly. It was a, just a sweet film. It has on here, though, a photo gallery on the film. This one here is from uh, Lionsgate as well. It's a movie called uh, uh, Backstabbing for Beginners. This stars Theo James and Ben Kingsley. It's basically about Theo James's character who, you know, just got a job as a U. I I think he was a U U U UN employee. But, he, like, the place, you know, that he worked for, the one guy had just ended up getting killed, like, right before he came in. It's pretty much, though, about, um, it's this guy kind of coming into this, this job, but he's sort of finding out, though, that there was some really kind of weird stuff that had happened in the past, you know, and this, the guy who worked before him that he kind of came to replace that got killed, he finds out that there's some really weird stuff going about on, on at this, this, where he's working, and um, Ben Kingsley, who was his boss, he has to kind of travel to where the guy that got killed was to try to sort of figure out what was happening, so he goes with Ben Kingsley, his boss, and he's like finding out stuff and Ben Kingsley's like, you know, you need to just, 
the better thing is for the world and the country is for you to kind of just, you know, not tell everything that you find out. We need to make this thing work because they're trying to work to help out people and like this kind of cause that they have. And they're trying to kind of make this thing work. And he's sort of saying, you need to kind of play along here. And there's certain things that you don't need to tell people because if you tell the people, it's going, it's not going to be good for the country. It's not going to be good for things. So you kind of need to swipe this under the rug. And he doesn't really know if he can do this. And it's sort of like, kind of deals with cover-ups and everything uh, pretty actually kind of an interesting film here uh, the next one here, uh, Warner Brothers sent over a free copy of this one to you know, let you guys know about. And this one I saw in theaters as well. I saw the first film. Uh, I actually liked the second movie better than the first one. The first movie was still a cool film, but this is um, Paddington 2. I don't know. I, I thought this was amazing. It actually has 100% you know, fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. But this was basically, though, about Paddington's character who's you know living with his family in London and... Um, he ends up wanting to buy this, you know, really fa expensive book for his, uh, you know, his aunt who lives still where Paddington came from out in the middle of the kind of like the jungle woods kind of area. And, you know, he's trying to save up money for this. But um, it's like Hugh Grant's character ends up, you know, stealing this book because he finds out it's really valuable and has like a clue that he needs to find something. And Paddington, though, ends up getting blamed, and it comes to look like he stole the book. And Paddington, ends, the character, ends up going to jail. And it's pretty much about Paddington in prison, dealing with like these rough and tough kind of characters in prison. And Paddington is kind of trying to prove his innocence and saying that he did not have anything to do with this book that was stolen. And his family is trying to kind of get to the bottom of who was it that stole the book, because you know Paddington doesn't know that it was Hugh Grant's character because he wore this kind of crazy, weird disguise. And it's kind of about you know all the kind of stuff that Paddington's up to in prison and like wacky stuff of him like making like marmalade sandwiches and I don't know I this was just a really really fun movie and it's one of those things too that I feel like kids will really like this movie adults will really like this movie I really got into this movie it has on here though some um you know I think some featurettes on here a thing like how to make a marmalade sandwich it has a music video it has a thing on here about the pop-up book that Paddington's character is trying to buy but definitely if you guys like the first movie highly recommend you guys check this one out the next one I got here from uh, Universal is a movie here called Den of Thieves, and this has the unrated version, which also includes the theatrical version. This stars Gerard Butler. It's basically like a film very similar to Heat. It's like about a bank robbery. It's about these guys who are trying to plan this like really elaborate uh, heist of a, you know the Federal Reserve Bank, and it's kind of like them kind of going through the whole thing. And it's one of those things too when they're kind of like trying to plan something, but then kind of trying to like you know it, it, it deals with kind of like planning things, but then kind of tricking people into like thinking it's something else going on like the trailer for this movie I felt like it kind of showed a lot of stuff you know what I mean like kind of like spoiled some things to the movie a little bit but it's essentially though about George Butler's character as this cop and he's like you know trying to because he's kind of noticing there's some things going on with these robberies and he's kind of trying to figure out exactly what's going on so it's kind of him kind of like looking around and sort of trying to figure out what is you know is going on because there was some other kind of robberies and there was like a thing something stolen that he's kind of thinking something is going on here and that's essentially what it is is it's a you know planning a heist type film like i said though this on has on here though the unrated version and the theatrical version the uh, uh unrated version is uh you know nine minutes longer on here but i honestly kind of like this movie it's not a perfect kind of bank heist movie but if you guys are into like these bank heist kind of films this also has uh o'shea o jackson you know uh jr on here you know who was in straight out of compton who's you know his ice cube son in real life and 50 cent is in the film as well uh, the next one here, this one is from Disney. This is a Disney Channel original movie called Zombies. And this is actually kind of fun. And I have to say, the costume designer who did it, like the costumes and the wardrobe in this movie, yeah, I, I really like that they, they gave this like kind of like a really, really like interesting kind of look. But it's essentially though about like years back, there was this like nuclear explosion where um, like the people, you know, who were nearby turned into zombies. But this is now years later and like the, they figured out kind of a way to kind of cure the zombies or kind of control the zombies by putting this thing like this bracelet that they wear and now because you know all the zombies that were kind of stayed the same age and everything but um 
they wear these kind of bracelets. So now the zombies that are like the younger ones can go to school. So it's kind of like the zombies coming to a high school, but when they're there, you know, um, they're kind of like the regular students who aren't zombies are kind of weirded out by the whole thing. And the one zombie comes over there and meets this one girl who isn't a zombie. It's kind of them kind of becoming friends. And the movie is also a musical. So it has like these musical dance scenes and stuff that kind of come in to play as well. But it's essentially though, just kind of about their kind of, sort of relationship going on and like the way people are kind of looking at them because he's a zombie and also deals with too about the way the zombies are treated because they're zombies and kind of looked down upon it's got like a actually a pretty decent message as well you know what, what the movie is going for with that like i said this was actually kind of a fun movie and the the songs in here are kind of fun i don't know i kind i thought this was actually just a, honestly a fun movie and the zombies all have like green hair and like this kind of like real washed out kind of look it's not like you know this is for kids and stuff so it's not like gory or anything like that but it's done in like kind of a comedic way but it has on here though bloopers uh, deleted scenes as well as all audition footage on this one the next ones here are all from Gravitas Ventures. And this is one I was really interested in seeing because it stars Dave Davis, who you know I acted in the movie Go Shark with and it's a movie here called um, Bomb City. And I don't want to say too much about the actual plot because like I didn't know all of what was going on. I know this this is based on a true story, but I don't want to say what the story is because I don't want to ruin anything. But it's essentially though about you know uh, Dave Davis's character who is like a has this whole group of like these friends who are all punks, and this is set in 1997. They're kind of just going around and they're doing like, um, you know, living, they're living in this kind of like kind of warehouse building that they're sort of squatting in, but not exactly because they're kind of paying the guy to let him stay there. And they kind of do uh, these kind of art projects where they make like change around like street signs and like put up all these street signs around the town and everything. But they're kind of like given, they get all kind of like problems from the people in the town, especially these like preppy kids and stuff. And you see right in the beginning, you see uh, one of the characters coming at these preppy kids with this chain and then it cuts to, a, you know, a, um, a courtroom and then it kind of goes back and forth between this courtroom to the the punk characters and kind of it kind of shows you more and more about how they end up in the courtroom and it's sort of sort of the whole thing uh, and it's I don't know this is a really really good character piece though I honestly you know acting wise though everybody did a really good job in this one and I thought you know it's a sad story though because like I said it's based on a true story and you know Marilyn Manson actually does like the opening narration and the ending narration to this movie and I think it was actually from a real interview but they did a really good job the way they used it Dave Davis though did it you know really great performance in this one I also really like the music some really cool like music that they use in this film as well like I said I'm not gonna I don't want to ruin too much but it's kind of has a feel a little bit to the film bully a little bit that kind of vibe but definitely would recommend you guys check this one out uh, the next one here is from Garage's Ventures as well, and it's a movie here called uh, Desolation. And this is basically, though, about this girl who's like, I think it's set in New York, and she ends up meeting this guy, I, can't, I think it was New York, and he's kind of an actor, she works in a movie theater. But he's kind of comes into the theaters because he's around town shooting this movie, and they kind of start to see each other and, you know, you know kind of start to sort of date. And he ends up inviting her to come out to Hollywood and kind of stay at his place. And she like is like, oh yeah, she really kind of wants to get away and you know from where she is and kind of change her life. And she kind of thinks she might just go there for a little bit, but then she doesn't really know how long she's gonna stay. But when she goes out there though, he stays in this kind of really weird old building and there's this really weird priest in it. The guy who played the priest is like a character actor. I can't say for sure what he's in, but I, I, I recognize him. He's been like in a ton of things though, I know. But he's kind of really weird, and you see, too, there's all these kind of, like, security cameras and stuff in this place. But essentially, though, when she goes there to this place and stays there, and he's out there still working in Hollywood doing movies and everything, and so he's kind of gone a lot. But she starts to seeing weird things and having weird stuff happen, and, you know, she gets some, some, something else. I don't want to spoil too much of this movie, but it's basically, though, some really odd things are going on in this place, and she doesn't know if she's kind of cracking up or what's going on. But honestly, this is kind of an interesting film, and it's kind of like one of those things where you don't know exactly, you know, what's going on in it. Because there's like so many weird things happening to this, to her character. The next one here is from Gravitas Ventures as well. It's a movie called The Bill Murray Experience. Uh, Experience, And this is directed by Sadie Katz and it's a documentary. It's basically though about her. She recently got, you know, got, uh, you know, left, left with her boyfriend. 
And it's kind of like she's like kind of like upset and everything in her life. And she always, she sees all these posts and stuff about, you know, people who met Bill Murray and, you know, people like the stuff where Bill Murray like stole some of your food and says, you're here never, you know, you never believe that I did this. And the Bill Murray did this. No one will ever believe this. And the times when he like surprised people at a wedding and things. And she's like, I really want to have a big experience like this. I want to have something like this happen to me. I'd love to meet Bill Murray or have something fun like this or memorable in my life. So she's kind of doing a documentary kind of about her life and kind of like how she's going to try and hopefully have a Bill Murray experience and she kind of talks to like um Bill Murray's brother and some people that work with Bill Murray. It's kind of like kind of a road trip documentary as well. It's kind of about her life and then hopefully, you know, trying to meet Bill Murray and, you know, will she or will she not meet Bill Murray? Honestly, though, it's kind of an interesting piece. Like, it's, like I said, it's all kind of about her trying to have her own Bill Murray experience. The next one here is a from Gravitas Ventures as well. It's a movie called Seven Guardians of the Tomb, and this stars Kelsey Grammer. This movie is pretty much, it's got like a similar vibe to The Mummy, cause it, it, like the, the first Mummy movie starring Brendan Fraser. It's got a, that kind of vibe. It's about this woman whose brother has, you know, an archaeologist and she's a, uh, you know, a scientist as well and her brother has gone missing in this tomb when he's out there exploring it. Kelsey Grammer's character says, you know, your brother has gone missing and she wants him, to, her to come and kind of go to the area and see, you know, what had happened, see if they can figure out where he is. And, you know, it, it kind of deals with, to, too, like these, like, really crazy, like, little spiders, too, that kind of can, like, eat people alive and stuff. And, like, and it's basically, though, the tomb is where this they found this body and stuff. And Kelsey Grammer's character has, like, a real specific thing that he's trying to find. And, like, he's, you can kind of tell that he's scheming up something. But of course, though, they go in there to the tomb, and it's not a good thing, and they kind of end up in a whole terrible situation, and that's essentially what it is. But a fun, like, you know, exploration kind of mummy, original mummy kind of vibe film. Has on here, though, a cast and crew featurette, a making a featurette interview with the director and cast interviews as well on this. The next one I got here from Funimation is Tokyo Ghoul. This is the live action film. If you guys don't know the Tokyo Ghoul, you know, is an anime series that has been for going on for years, but this is the, you know, the, the theatrical live action film. And this has the Japanese version as well as the English dub on here. It's basically, though, set in a world where there's ghouls that are kind of that go out and, like, you know, hu survive on humans or eating humans. And this one guy gets attacked by a ghoul, and the ghoul that, you know, attacks him ends up getting killed. And this guy is dying, and they end up, you know, finding him out there. And they take the organs from this woman that they didn't know was a ghoul and put them into him. And he becomes basically part human, part ghoul. And he kind of has all these changes that are happening to him. So he starts to have to, you know, wants to you know feast on humans but he's trying to kind of resist and it's sort of about him discovering a whole world of ghouls as well and then these people that are kind of trying to come after them and kill them like this kind of group that's about you know like kind of tracking down ghouls and killing them this was actually really good i actually really really like this one like i said it has on here the um English language one and the Japanese, original Japanese language track on this one, but would really recommend you guys check this out. Uh, the next ones here are from uh, Cynodyme. This is a movie here called A Place in Hell, and this is about a group of these, uh, you know, students who are filmmakers in a film program, and they get, you know, you know, have to film a short film. They're kind of talking about making this kind of horror film because like in the class though it's like this guy wants the people to make like really scary horror movies and things so he's like oh try and make something super super creepy and as scary as you can be so they go out there to this old abandoned house but of course though at the same time there's this cop who's actually looking for the serial killer that's kind of gone missing and he's kind of trying to track down the serial killer but why these people are making this short film in this in this place it's like a, it's actually an abandoned house but it's also where they have like a haunted kind of attractions during the you know ha Halloween time so it's kind of like a place like that that has that kind of history to it but you know when they're there you know of course you see somebody kind of lurking around and, and like sort of spying on them and things are starting to happen it's kind of like is this the serial killer or what is going on here and that's essentially what it is here but I always like movies too that are about you know making movies this one here is uh, from Synodyme as well and it's a movie called Writer's Retreat this is about a group of these um people who are all like in a, like a creative writing kind of program that they are in where they go and try and learn about like writing kind of different types of stories and kind of like horror stories, suspense stories, you know, all kind of different genres of horror, of, of stories. But they go to this weird kind of island area where they basically where, you know, the, like the tide kind of comes in and nobody could leave during the certain hours. So they kind of basically are trapped there for a number of hours on this island. 
in this house and it's pretty much about you know when they're there there's kind of like weird kind of lessons that they're having and kind of the uh, teacher is kind of trying to dig into their past and kind of bringing up things that kind of open up wounds for them and kind of causing problems for them to try and like because with all these kind of lessons that he has to try and teach them to kind of bring out other things from them to do these stories but of course though there's some really weird stuff going on when they're doing this and it's kind of about the things that are happening to them while they're there it's kind of an interesting one i think it was you know i think it was in ireland i believe but i don't know i kind of thought this was actually kind of a different kind of film the next one here is from hbo just want to let you guys know this one is available now this is the complete third season of the show starring dwayne johnson called ballers and it's about basically him as a sports agent and all the kind of problems that are going on with the people that he's working with in their lives and his life as well but it's like i said just want to let you guys know this one is available now from hbo now the next one here are from vinegar syndrome and this first one here is a movie called blood hook this is a really really fun wacky movie about a group of people coming to town for this kind of like the one guy like this person inherits his house but but where there are there they're having like a kind of a fishing championship and people are kind of like all in this town are all about like fishing and there's a competition going on but somebody is killing people and you see people getting like we reeled in with fish hooks and kind of really crazy deaths and stuff like that people like getting cut across the stomach and everything and it's kind of like who is this person involved in killing these people and like I said, all these kind of wacky, wacky, crazy deaths. You know, years back, Troma released this movie. Um, it's just a really, really fun, crazy, silly film. The director of this one, too, directed the Mystery Science Theater 3000, the movie. This has on here, though, a brand new 2K scan from the 16mm negative. It has an interview on here with the director, interview with one of the actresses on here, uh, audio interview on here, uh, you know, transfer-wise, too. Vinegar Syndrome did a really great job cleaning this one up. Same with this one here called Blue Vengeance. This is about a guy who's in print, you know, in it, um, I think it was in prison or the nut house. I can't, I can't remember. I've watched so many things in this update, but he basically ends up, you know, um, you know, trying to kill himself, you know, and he hangs himself, but he ends up, you know, not dying and he comes back because he kind of, you know, deals with all this satanic kind of stuff, but he comes back and it's kind of him when he comes back from the dead, he wants to try and track down this band that he's like obsessed with, but along the way he's going around and like killing people and there's like these crazy deaths of him like just going on the way, like total like nuts case status along the way, like anyone that picks him up or anyone he comes across he ends up killing. This has on here though a brand new 2K uh, scan of this one from the 35 millimeter negative has a commentary track on here with the director on here come with commentary track with one of the actors as well as um, an unreleased film as well but this is just a really really crazy crazy film but transfer wise though vinegar syndrome did a great job cleaning these ones up the next ones here are from uh Dobelgang are releasing along with scorpion releasing it's a movie here called ola baby uh, Ola, Bobby, and Rose. And this is um, basically, though, about this guy who works as a gas station attendant, and he meets this girl that he really likes, and it's kind of like about their relationship. But, you know, it's all set during the 70s and has, like, really, really great music. Like, Elton John has music on here. They, they really did a great job on the soundtrack to this film. But it's basically, though, about something ends up happening one night, and he kind of pulls this prank in this gas station and somebody ends up getting killed. And it's kind of like them who are kind of on the run because they know there's no way that they can kind of, you know, convince people that they didn't actually mean for this to happen and it's going to look like they had something to do with it. It's kind of just about like a road movie about them kind of talking about like their plans for life and kind of what they want to do but a really really well done film it has a, on here a brand new uh scan you know hd scan 2017 scan of the film as well as brand new interviews on here with the stars on this one as well as the director this one here is a movie called um red rings of fear or enigma rosso this is from the same company as well this is basically though about this um this murder and it's basically about the guy who ends up going to um he goes to this girl's school because like he believes that they, this kind of has something to do with the whole thing so it's kind of him going to this girl's school kind of asking questions and stuff and it's you know it's a giallo film so it's kind of one of those ones too where you know this film there was murder and you kind of like not knowing who the person could be and you're always thinking could it be this person could it be that person because that's the one thing with giallo films they always kind of try and confuse the audience and like so you don't really know for sure you know who the person is this has on here though a brand new uh, scan from the original negative on here with you know color correction as well as a commentary track on here with historical um, you know a film historian on this one and also has the English language version as well as the Italian version with English subtitles on this one but transfer wise though really really great transfer on that 
The next one here is from Mondo Macabro. This is a movie called The Devil Incarnate. And this is, you know, starring Paul Nache. And this is basically, though, about, like, the devil comes back to life. And it's kind of him, like, this is set, like, in the, in the 16th century in Spain. It's kind of the devil's come back, and he's kind of lurking around in Spain. And he's kind of coming across different kind of characters. And it's kind of like he kind of meets people, and he finds these women that he's sleeping with. And it's kind of just, like, kind of him you know, poping around the world and around the town and kind of coming across other type of characters and stuff. If you guys know, guys know Paul and Shea's kind of films, they always have a similar kind of vibe, but this is, you know, really, really great cinematography. Just a really, really interesting film. It has on here, though, a brand new uh, 4K, uh, you know, restoration on this one, introduction to the film by Paul and Shea, and some other features on this as well, but a pretty interesting movie. This one here, one of you guys know is available. Well, it's actually, I don't think it's available to, to watch, you know, to buy the, the Blu-ray yet. But you guys can see it on YouTube. And it's an anthology series called The Witching Season. And this is a really, really great cover on this one as well. Love this artwork. But it's basically, it's uh, one, two, three, it's five different stories on here. Horror stories. It's a different ones. It's like, um... A bunch of different stories on here that are all like horror anthology stories and they you know they're all um you know originally were just shorts and he can combine them together for this blu-ray release but you guys can watch them like i said on youtube but really pretty cool horror stories and if you guys are interested too i'll put a link to the youtube channel so you guys can see them and the next one here uh, is from uh, pbs and this is um bill nye the science guy um this is a documentary on on bill nye this is basically, though, kind of talking about him, you know, kind of coming back into the public eye again. Because, you know, he's known for the Bill Nye Science Guy series. And this is kind of about his life, and he's kind of trying to really kind of talk about how science is kind of not in the world as much as it needs to be and kind of people who are kind of trying to disprove science through through religion things and all the kind of other things and he's kind of trying to say how important it is for school and he's kind of going around and he goes to like um uh the ark experience which is one guy who, who runs that kind of challenges him to go and he's challenging his beliefs and saying that bill nye's beliefs are not true because he doesn't have a phd which is kind of interesting it's, it's very interesting documentary about all about bill Nye and kind of his quest for trying to bring science more, you know, to more to the mainstream more and really trying to push, you know, things about, you know, global warming and all that kind of stuff. But honestly, really pretty interesting. I've always been a fan to a Bill Nye. The next one here is from The Orchard. It's a movie here called Thelma. This is actually an interesting movie. A similar kind of feel a little bit without being a horror film to the film Carrie. It's basically about this girl who's like really religious that comes to this like girl's school and she kind of starts to have like feelings for, it's basically though, when she's she starts having these seizures and these weird things that are happening to her but right around the same time when this happens she meets this girl there and the one girl kind of shows these feelings for her and they're kind of like both sort of feeling these you know like sorry kind of liking each other but this religious girl is super religious and she's kind of like trying to suppress these feelings and kind of and it's kind of making things really worse for her for her and she's having like weird stuff's happening and like you know, things with her mind and buildings are starting to kind of shake. And it's kind of, like I said, it's got a real feel, a similar kind of vibe to Carrie. But it's amazing cinematography, a really, really interesting character piece about, you know, about her kind of suppressing her feelings. But really interesting film here. Like I said, this is from uh, Passion River as well as The Orchard. This one, you guys know, this one is available too from Monarch Home Entertainment. It's a movie here called Strings. You know, I'll put a link to for the website for this one. But just like guys, this one that you guys know, like I said, this one is available. Sorry, this is such a long video. There's like so many reviews here. I didn't even believe know how many I had here. So my face is getting all flushed because there's a lot of stuff to get through. But anyway, though, guys, thanks for watching the review portion of this video, and I'll see you guys later.